This is one of those videos where us gear geeks are like, oh, but I just need a few more things before I can make that video because your gear collection is never complete. But you know what? It is time. It is time that I finally show you all of the gear, gadgets, and technologies that I use to create these travel videos. I'm so glad you've tuned in to talk travel video gear with me. Everything I mention will be linked in the video description below and on ama.tv. And of course, if you use my links, you'll help to support my channel so I can buy more gear and do more gear review videos for you. Today, we will discuss camera, lighting, mics, tripods, grips, software, storage, cases, charging options, and computers. If you're not yet a subscriber to AMA TV, hello, my name is Alicia, and I would love to have you join in on the fun by clicking the subscribe button below so you don't miss any of my videos. Now let's get started. My main camera is the Canon T6S, which is the latest and best in Canon's Rebel series, which is their consumer level line of DSLRs. While the ADD with a full frame sensor would be nice to have, I do appreciate that this one is smaller, lighter, and cheaper. The body of this camera is just $850 without the lens and the model before it, the T5i is also pretty good and it's gonna be a little bit less. Although I don't always use it, I have enjoyed this line of Mega Gear camera cases over the years. That one was my favorite. They are obviously gorgeous and give your modern day tech a nice vintage feel while offering stylish walk around protection. As it can be a bit clumsy while shooting, you can easily remove this entire front piece and just keep the stylish base in place, which I think looks very nice. And you can even use it on a grip or tripod this way. Now, if somebody could just make a gorilla pod with like bronze or gold accents, oh my gosh. Of course, the main benefit of a DSLR is the interchangeable lens system, and I do generally keep the Canon EFS 18 to 135 millimeter lens on it. It offers great versatility for vlogging with the 18 millimeter, and then the 135 zoom is a pretty decent zoom. And while I ended up ordering this lens later, it actually is the Canon kit lens. So before you hate on kit lenses, know that I actually chose this one because I thought it was the most versatile. And you can now get this entire thing together for $1,050. Alternatively, I do love my Nifty 50 as this lens is called. It's a fixed 50 millimeter 1.8 aperture lens that will allow you to get all of those nice artsy bokeh shots that we all love. This lens doesn't work great for everything since 50 millimeter is a little bit tight, but at only 125 bucks, it's a great extra fun lens to have. I do believe this lens hood is a must. It not only blocks out unwanted lens flare from the sun, it helps to protect the lens, which I need. And I also found it to be a clever opportunity for branding. You see, I've got the AMA TV sticker on there. These AMA TV stickers have been super fun to stick all over my gear. I'll link below on either how you can get one from me or have them made inexpensively with your own design. Although I do love running around with my DSLR, I realized that I also needed a camera that you can literally take anywhere. So I had to get what YouTube knows as the best vlogging camera or at least one of them. It's the Canon G7X and I'm actually filming this video on it right now. I actually filmed two other videos discussing this camera in depth, so be sure to check those out so you can learn lots more and see live footage. Basically, it has a fairly large one inch sensor for point and shoot, again, a 1.8 aperture lens, and this amazing flip out screen, which is awesome for vlogging. And then my super popular superstar is this guy right here. I'm not saying it's super popular because everyone has one, more so because everyone's trying to figure this camera out and decide if it might be right for them. Oh, hello. It's truly revolutionary. I have made a handful of videos dedicated to this piece of gear alone, discussing its accessories and general capabilities. Its shining feature is these super smooth, stabilized shots, and while it can be used for vlogging, I think it most excels out in wide open spaces, like this forest. But to summarize, this thing is a handheld, gimbalized, stabilized camera made by DJI, a company that usually only makes drones, including my dream drone, the Phantom 4. I don't yet own a Phantom 4, but sometimes I visit with this one, so that counts. His name is Chuck. And then of course, for those underwater shots, or generally dangerous to the camera shots, like the color run, I've got the GoPro Hero 4, which is the ultimate action camera. For its housing, I've come to highly favor this unique matte black piece with a discreet design that also helps hide any LED lights. And in addition to the housing, for a GoPro, you almost always need some sort of grip, clamp, or mount. My first grip was literally that, just a small pole to hold on to, although I realized shortly after that most grips can actually serve a dual purpose. For example, when you're in open water, you absolutely need some sort of floating grip, because even if your GoPro is protected from water, it does you no good if it's on the bottom of the ocean and you can't find it. I love this bright and fun water toy looking one, although there are lots of nice black and gray ones too. While on land, of course, you can use a gorilla pod as a grip and also use it as a tripod when necessary. I'm completely hooked on using these and do have a different size for each camera that I own, including the G7X, which has the medium size. Alternatively, I do have this Dinkum Systems clamp grip, which you can clamp onto 
pretty much anything. It's super strong, so railings, tabletops, fences, anything you can clamp something onto. Of course, there are lots of different mounting options for the GoPro as well, and I do have this clip that I specifically wanted so I could clip it onto a backpack. It's important to know that this clip is unique because it rotates to allow you to position the GoPro correctly on a backpack. I was glad to even find one that did this, as most will mount it the other way for some reason. And to add one more to the family of action cameras, I've got the Polaroid Cube Plus. This is a super simple, fun camera that is almost fully operated by the app and this one button. At a much lower price point, it's perfect for kids to start out with, and it's got this great built-in slow motion feature, shooting at 120 frames per second. As for tripods, I finally got a good one, and I would like to thank KF Concepts for that. I had my eye on this one because I was looking for something lightweight for travel, yet high quality, and not too super expensive. Tripods are weird in that they are either super cheap and crappy, or really super expensive. I mean, $1,000 for these. It all has to do with the cost of the carbon fiber, but still, I don't like to travel with super expensive gear, but I want something that is going to get the job done. So this k and Concepts tripod is made from magnesium aluminum alloy, and I think it's the perfect middle ground at a little bit over $100 and very impressive on the quality end. It is super sturdy with a gorgeous finish. It has this smooth 360 degree ball head. It's almost 68 inches high, it converts to a monopod, and it comes with this very nice branded carrying case for travel. This company really knows how to put quality into the details, and I highly recommend this tripod because I've been loving it. And of course, if a company sends me something to review and test out, I'm always going to share with you guys my honest opinion. And while we're talking stands, I'm not really sure where this product would fit in as it's pretty unique. It's basically a super sturdy mounting system for your iPhone so you can step up your production level with your phone as your camera and shoot really good videos on it. Now this not only holds your phone on a tripod, the real benefit comes with the cold shoe mounts conveniently placed around it. This way you can attach a light, a mic, and other accessories to turn your iPhone phone video shoot into a high quality production. And special thanks to Iographer as well for sending this to me quite a while back. I did make one video about it and it's actually at my friend's house right now. But when I get it back, I think I'm going to make a more comprehensive review of it. So let me know if you'd like to see that. And while we're here, some of the accessories you can add to the Iographer or the Osmo or a DSLR, anything with a cold shoe mount, include this Manfrotto light. Um, it's a great fill-in light. It gives you a nice pop of warm glow. This one actually is broken. They have newer models now, but it's always a good thing to have in your camera bag. You can also mount the Rode shotgun mic. It's gonna provide nice, smooth, directional audio, and it's definitely a step up from the built-in audio in any camera. And since I'm currently filming on the Canon G7X, which doesn't have an external audio input, I am currently recording audio on the Rode lav mic which is right here, so if you hear me do any of this. That's kind of the downfall of a lav mic, but it's great because it records the audio directly to my phone, which I then sync up with it later. And then for audio voiceovers, which I do so often in these travel videos, I've been using the iRig Mic HD. This is more of an interview stick mic than a voiceover mic, but it delivers decent sound if I get myself in the right environment. I basically put myself either under a heavy blanket or in a padded closet to remove any noise or echo from the room. So there's a pro tip for you. Moving into the all important aspect of battery power, especially when you attend all day outdoor festivals like I do, you will either need backup batteries or a backup way to charge those batteries. I prefer both. This company, Accessory Power, has sent me the Revive Solar Charger, which has three fold-out solar charging panels, which soak up the sun and then put all of that solar energy into my camera, which is awesome. But if I do have access to a plug, I will constantly recharge this battery pack by my charge. I love this one because it has the built-in pop-out cables, which makes it so convenient. You don't have to mess with any cables. These things will charge your GoPro, they'll charge your phone, and they will even charge the Canon G7X Mark II since the new version does have the USB charging option, which is awesome. It's also really good for when your phone is dying and you're about to go to bed and you know you should just plug your phone in and go to bed, but you don't want to because you want to get in bed and cradle your phone and like look at Instagram before you fall asleep so you can bring this to bed and plug it in and still use your phone and everything is fine. This is a horrible habit by the way, don't do this. Now to actually store and cart around all this craziness, I have this really handy trunk made by Husky. Inside of it I like to keep everything very modular, so I have a case for batteries, smaller batteries, cords and cables, etc. I like to find different black cases to fit into the mix, and while I sometimes use makeup bags, seriously guys, check out the makeup bag section at Target or Walmart for lots of nice, sleek black bag options for your cables and accessories. I've also got this nice, sleek Bombata bag that I got in Amsterdam. It's a really cool brand, and it's actually a pencil case. 
but I use it to store small parts. I also just got this perfect little camera backpack, again from KNF Concept. It holds the DSLR, lenses, attachments, accessories. Of course, it's modular and can be customized to suit whatever you need. It has front pockets for your phone and any notepads that you might be working with. And best of all, you can even attach a tripod to the side of it. How cool is that? Again, its craftsmanship is quite quality and I love the orange accents and KNF branding. And finally, to store all of my travel video footage, I use this random mix of SD cards that I'm trying to work into this handy waterproof case, which is really quite nice. Although in reality, most of my cards tend to live either in my cameras or in the card readers, which later go into my baby, my MacBook Pro, of course. This is a mid-2012 Retina, and although it's amazing, I'm already planning an upgrade. And since we're talking Apple, I've also recently added the Apple Watch in gold and white of course. Additionally, this new gadget by Stands Out called the Helix was something I picked up at CES 2016. It's amazing in that it keeps my Apple Watch charging cable neatly wrapped up and creates a nice looking docking station. Definitely eliminates the cable clutter. Now I don't rock any super crazy cool headphones, but for editing on the go, I love my simple white Sony fold up set because trust me, nobody wants to listen to you edit your videos. And finally for editing, which does consume 99.9% .9 of the filmmaking process, at least for me, I do use Final Cut Pro. I have dabbled in both this and Premiere, but I'm pretty much an Apple girl all the way, so I mostly use Final Cut. But if you follow me on Snapchat, then you already know this, because I literally talk about it there all the time and show you my screen. So there you guys have it, all of my travel video production gear. I'm adding more to the mix every day and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So leave me a comment below and let me know if you've been inspired to add anything to your personal collection or if you can think of anything that you really think I should add to mine. Enjoy exploring the gear links in the video description below and on ama.tv and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.